This lampshade is made with Ceratec Sculpt Clear High Temperature Resin. It's mixed beautifully, actually, with this Amerilabs TGM7 to create a kind of translucent blue. I really like this result, and I think this resin has a lot of potential. But it was also quite a steep learning curve, and I had varied success. And in this video, I'll show you what I learned so that hopefully I can save you some trouble if you decide to use Ceratec Sculpt Clear. Now, when Ceratec reached out to me and asked if I'd like to test some of their resin, I was actually really curious about Sculpt Clear because the resin claims to have good thermal resistance up to 180 degrees Celsius. And we're certainly going to test that in this video in five heat tests. So stick around for those. But first, let me say a couple of things. Um, firstly, I'd like to say that Ceratec support is great. Now, look, you might think that I'm just saying that because they've given me some free resin to try. Uh, and that's fair enough. But working with uh, this resin, the Sculpt, uh, it's a specialty resin. It takes some practice. And I had to ask for some help along the way. Ceratec support was always quick to respond, even on weekends. And I've also purchased other Ceratec resins myself, like this blue and uh, build, these two here. Uh, so not everything has been free. The second thing is base layer exposure time. Initially, I had heaps of trouble removing prints from the build plate. Now, look, I know about lowering base exposure times and all that stuff, and I started lowering them fairly quickly in test prints, but I had to go all the way down to eight seconds to be able to easily and safely remove the prints. Now, I didn't even know that you could actually go that low and still have successful prints. So if you're gonna use this resin, keep that in mind because it, uh, it might just save you a lot of trouble. In fact, I think you could probably go down to six seconds. Anyway, Ceratec says that this resin is a good choice for injection molding, vacuum forming, and vulcanized rubber processes. But it also says that it can be blended with other resins to enhance their properties. And that's what I was interested in when making these light features. Now I found that the resin definitely prints with good detail, exactly as you'd expect. But one thing I found that other reviewers have commented on on the Ceratec website is that it's very sticky and, well, it's hard to clean. I used new undiluted IPA and washed the print for up to 15 minutes and I still got a sticky result. Ceratec also did suggest that I try curing the print in water and I've heard that argument many times before and that improved the results marginally, but well, not enough to be really convincing. I also noticed that it's not what you might call a high clear resin. It turned out a bit cloudy in my prints and the sticky residue made getting a super clean finish even more difficult. Now you can see from these early prints that I was really having a lot of trouble getting a good result. Ceratec did suggest that I try reducing the exposure time. So I experimented with the Ceratec exposure test model. Again, base layer times were an issue and I found that the RERF test on my Anycubic printers they increased the uh, exposure times on each print, of course, and as they did that, they became more brittle and hard to remove. But after a lot of testing, I settled on two and a half seconds for this Anycubic Mono X 6KS printer. So what about heat resistance? Well, I'm using this uh, heat gun and this thermal camera. Now, to get a temperature of around 180 degrees at the print, I've had to experiment with setting the heat gun much higher, and you can see that on the thermal camera footage. Here you can see that heat spots are starting to appear on the resin. The temperature at the heat gun is up around 300 degrees to get approximately 100 at the print surface. Now, I should say that this is not testing the heat uniformly around the print, and it may perform better when heat is applied evenly, like when it's used for injection molding or vacuum forming. So that's a limitation of the testing that I'm using here. The prints in these tests are also quite thin at two millimeters wall thickness. It does become more flexible, as you'd expect, but it does also start to crack, which I didn't expect. I thought it would just get very soft uh, and maybe even catch fire. I thought that that was impressive given that I'd cranked the heat up to uh, about 500 degrees, depending on which way I was holding the uh, angle of the print to the heat gun. In this next test, I used a print with much finer detail. Again, the wall thickness on these small details on this lampshade are only two millimeters in diameter. And look, you might say that it's unfair to expect too much of this resin at this size of detail and temperature. And that's fair enough. But this is my use case, so I'm gonna test it anyway. You can see that the bits start to break off fairly easily once the temperature at the print gets above around about 100 degrees. And it doesn't take too long for this print to really start breaking apart with some handling. But it's not melting and it's not on fire. What's really interesting though, is that the resin seems to be brittle when cured, but really flexible during the print. And I haven't seen that before. 
If you take a look at these two prints, the one on the left is a mixture of Amerilab's TGM7 and Antinsky Heavy Metal Silver. The print is flawless. The detail renders beautifully and the surface finish after curing isn't sticky and it's very easy to clean, but you can't use it as a heat resistant resin mix. The Soraiatek Clear, however, was too flexible in printing this print, which resulted in the individual lines in the print sticking together near the top. Now I tried slowing the print down to avoid this happening, and uh, well, that made a tiny difference, but not enough to solve the problem. What you see here is that Sculpt Clear is not a bad resin, it's just not appropriate for this use case. Now let's see how the resin performs when mixed with another resin. In this case, I'm going to see if Sculpt Clear can improve the heat resistance of Amerilab's TGM7. The one on the left is mixed with Sculpt Clear, and the one on the right is unmixed Amerilab's TGM7. Now, I can't believe that I'm actually going to do this to this blue print, and that's because the Amerilab's resin is very expensive, and I really like the finish and the colour. But look, in the name of Colin's workshop testing, here goes. I don't know the exact ratios that I mixed this with, I just kept mixing until I got a colour that I thought looked, well, looked about right. So it's a purely aesthetic measure. And I have to say, this is where I was surprised about how little difference the addition of Sculpt Clear made to this print. It became soft and then cracked easily. Now of course I was expecting it to become soft and flexible, but I wasn't expecting it to crack. So this is more likely a limitation of my testing procedure against what the resin was designed for. Or maybe my aesthetic measure for mixing the resins, well it's just not appropriate. <laughs> but you're probably wondering, what about the one without any Sculpt Clear mixed in? Well, I'm glad you asked. This also really surprised me. At first I thought that the TGM7 was as good, if not better than the one that was mixed with Sculpt Clear. The print gets very flexible and appears to handle that reasonably well, but then it finally gives into cracking. So with this very basic test, I actually can't say whether the TGM7 was better off with the Sculpt Clear or not. The temperature on the print was around about 180 degrees Celsius, and the TGM7 has a heat deflection temperature of 58.3 degrees. So I guess you could say that under these extreme conditions it was doing okay, kind of. This is the same design as the one previously shown in this video, but with a second band to help stop the long thin elements of this lampshade from sticking together. This did dramatically improve the print, but you can also see a slight pincushioning effect showing just how flexible this resin is during printing. The print got up to about 80 or 90 degrees, depending on how I was holding it during the test. And well, actually I thought this would have survived it better, but you can see that it starts to break apart quite easily. Now it's important to remember here that adding TGM7 to this mix might actually be the wrong resin to mix with Sculpt Clear. They might be incompatible and I'd need to do some further research about that. But you might also be wondering, just how heat resistant do I need this to be anyway, to make simple light features like these ones? Well, the answer is uh, not that much, actually. <laughs> I left this light feature here running for about an hour and then measured in around the inside of the lampshade with my uh, thermal camera. You can see that the globe itself is only about 64 degrees and the lampshade surface is only about 35 degrees. Now, that's because it's only a small globe, and naturally it would be hotter if it was a higher wattage globe. So for these low power projects, the conclusion is that a high temperature resin actually isn't that necessary. And that's entirely due to the design of the feature and the rating of the globe. In these designs, there's plenty of airflow and the globe is fairly low power. But if you don't have good airflow, even a low powered LED light strip is enough to deform the resin. Take a look at this light feature, which uses a USB powered light strip and is made with Anycubic Gen 1 Tough Resin. Here it is right here. After a few hours of use, it, um, well, it starts to sag. Let's turn it on. Here we go. There you go. It's hard to see because it's all bent. After a few hours, it uh, starts to sag, and then after a few more hours, it um, kind of collapses completely. So clearly there is room for high temperature resins like Sculpt Clear. Of course there is. So what to make of this resin? Well, I can't comment on things like uh, injection molding and uh, making models for vacuum forming. But if you're looking for a resin that can increase the heat resistance of your projects, then Sculpt Clear could achieve that for you without changing the color of the primary resin too much. And well, I reckon that could be useful. Also, keep in mind that my test is quite brutal. <laughs> heat gun right up close, uh, with the heat focused right on one point. So it's pretty intense. Injection molding or vacuum forming would, I imagine, apply the heat uh, far more evenly, resulting in better success. 
Now, if you know more about that than I do, then please let us all know by leaving a comment. I'm sure we'd all like to read about that. I'd like to thank Saray Tech for the chance to test this resin. Now, I've also got a few others to test, these three here, which they've sent me. So if you're into printing functional parts or things that need some toughness, then get subscribed and stay tuned for further videos. And like I said, I've had much more success with other Saray Tech resins like uh, Build and Blue, which are these two here, which I actually paid for myself. If you found that helpful, then hit the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing. I'm always interested to read other people's experiences in resin printing, and especially any info you can share to improve results with, uh, with this resin, Sculpt Clear. This space is constantly evolving, so there's always something new to learn. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.